On this Friday show, we'll get into Justin Peck's scary crash last night and why this should be a wake-up call for the industry. We've also got Thursday results, what to watch this weekend, and more. Let's go. It's Friday, May 26th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Absolutely insane, really nasty wreck at Bridgeport last night at the start of the All-Star feature, and that's where we'll start today's show. Last night was the first of four races coming up this weekend for the All-Stars, and Freddie Raymer and Tyler Courtney led the field to green. Things went sideways quick, though, and Justin Peck ended up at the center of one of the scarier sprint car crashes we've seen in a while. After it was all said and done, he emerged from the car under his own power, and although he did take a trip to the local hospital to get checked out, he's since been released according to a statement from Boop Motorsports. The car was absolutely destroyed, and the cage above Peck's head was actually broken from the impacts. The 13 machine started outside row 4 and ended up kind of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It looked like maybe Anthony Macri spun the tires hard on the start as he was sideways out of 4. Contact then from Brent Marks behind him sent the 39M up the racetrack directly into the pack of Peck. The path of Peck, excuse me. The contact turned Peck uh, head on into the front stretch roll right before the flag stand. As his car spun around and turned over, the wing and the top of the cage ended up inside a break in the catch fence. The break is there as a crossover point from kind of that front grandstands area to the racetrack itself. Uh, you can see the stairs there, right? I mean, literally right underneath the flag stand. There's also a railing there, which Peck's car contacted, and there are photos floating around of that railing now bent way back. It looks like the steel railing kind of buried in the concrete. His car then pirouetted out into traffic where it was then hit by J.J. Hickel's 97 and Dominic Malaire's 55 before coming to a stop right side up. It was the perfect storm of conditions and the absolute worst place on the front straightaway for Peck's car to end up. It's honestly a miracle he was not injured or worse. Later, as the wreckage was towed away, we could see the extensive damage to the cage, including the bars over his head broken and the vertical tubing that is directly in front of the driver, driver broken as well. For anyone that sees the incident and the aftermath, I don't know how you view this as anything but a serious wake-up call for the industry. Justin Peck got lucky this time, but that will not always be the case. Tracks and series absolutely must do a better job leading the way on safety improvements. And if there are weird places like this at tracks, you can be damn sure that at some point a car will find its way to them. Whether it's openings or gaps, blunt corners, weird fencing, you know, tractor tires, all of it has got to be addressed and improvements to the cars need to be thought about as well. Uh, racing is dangerous. We know that. That's true. But we can't be okay with what we saw last night. Fans, drivers, crews, series officials, everyone should be upset about this. In his podium interview, Anthony Macri was clearly rattled by what happened, and I'm sure he wasn't the only one that was in attendance that felt that way. As a side note here, I do want to give major kudos to the track workers and series officials that end up as first responders to these crashes. These guys have absolutely no idea what they're running into, and yet they never hesitate to be the first on the scene. I know a lot of these folks have seen some absolutely terrible stuff over the years, and their jobs are so important in these moments. Big hat tip to them. I did also want to address the aftermath on social media. The All-Star Twitter account posted after the crash that Tyler Ross and Dominic Malaire had been DQ'd for getting out of their cars in the moments after the dust was settling, and both were involved in the incident. The responses to the tweet came swift and ugly, with folks hammering the series for DQing guys after a crash in this way. This was race fans, this was drivers, this was all sorts of people uh, hitting the All-Stars for this. And the assumption was that they had gotten out of their cars to check on Peck and were then penalized unjustly for it. But in reality, that's not what happened. And I would urge some caution in moments like this. Things are flying around, you know, situations are crazy. Uh, you know, maybe we hold the brakes a little bit on, on reacting to things. As others pointed out on social media, there are actually New Jersey state laws in place in regards to what happens at racetracks. And those laws state the drivers are to remain in their cars during incidents. But also in this case, both drivers got out of their cars for other reasons. There wasn't even video evidence of them doing what the Twitter, uh, Twitter responses assumed they were doing. As I've been told, neither was upset about the DQs and neither was going to return to the race anyway. 
All star officials and safety workers were on the scene very quickly, and the only driver who it sounded like did get out to check on Peck was JJ Hickel, and he was not DQ'd in the aftermath. I know some have since deleted their tweets and walked their comments back, but it was a nasty situation that could have been avoided with just a little bit of context. Rules exist for a reason, and although we don't want to see anyone hurt after getting out of their cars, these series officials are smart enough to understand what's going on in these cases. The All-Star Series director was a racer himself. Uh, once the racing uh, did get going, it was all Tyler Courtney out front. He led all 30 laps to score his fourth win of the year. He topped Kyle Reinhardt and Anthony Macri. Headed to Williams Grove tonight, Courtney has extended his points lead. Following the Grove, Port Royal is next on Saturday and Sunday for the Weikert Memorial. All right, uh, elsewhere last night, we had a bunch of other stuff going on. At Lucas Oil Speedway, the Lucas Oil Lay Model Dirt Series got the Show Me 100 weekend going. After starting outside front row, it turned into just the night Jonathan Davenport needed. He'd gone four straight races, finishing 12th or worse with Lucas, and last night he led all 45 laps for the win. Ricky Thornton Jr. ran him down late from 10th, but couldn't find a way by in those last couple of laps. He settled for second with Tyler Bruning in third. It was Davenport's second Lucas win of the season, but first since way back on January 30th. I've seen multiple comments on my shows uh, from people asking what's been up with Davenport, but I think it's important to remember that he's got a new crew chief this season. Uh, Jason Durham departed that team after 2022, and it's clearly taking new boss Corey Fosvet some time to get his arms around their full program. With as good as Hudson O'Neill and RTJ have been lately, Davenport could use some good nights to stay within contact in the standings. Lucas will do it all over again tonight for $6,000, and then Saturday is the big 50000 to win 100 lap main event. At Sharon, the Word of Outlaws Lay Models also kicked off a three-race weekend. Chris Madden dominated the 25-lapper, grabbing his first Outlaw win of the year. Now you think about it, he's been at the top of the standings, but he's really done it through consistency and not necessarily winning. Bobby Pierce and Mike Marler ended up second and third. Madden's points lead has now grown to uh, 40 over Ryan Gustin with two more nights at Sharon on tap. It did not turn into a good night for early front runners Greg Satterley and Drake Troutman. On the same lap, Troutman made contact with Bobby Pierce and hit the front straightaway wall that broke his suspension ending his night. And then just a few hundred feet later, Satterley was caught up in a mess between two lap cars and ended up crashed. Those guys had speed though, and hopefully they can bounce back tonight. In Indiana, the USAC Sprint Cars wrapped up a busy week with their second night at Circle City. Pole sitter uh, Robert Ballou led the first few laps before Kyle Cummins took over for good on lap four. Justin Grant took some serious shots at Cummins a few different times, but ended up out of the race after jumping the turn two cushion and hitting the wall. Jake Swanson and Brady Bacon rounded out the podium, and as USAC pointed out, those three guys were on the podium all three nights this week in various different configurations. They all got wins and all had very good weeks. Cummins continues to lead the point standings headed to Knoxville next, and he's been strong through these opening few months. Ten races, eight top tens, eight top fives, and two wins. His only blemish in a points-paying race was 20th at Bloomington. Uh, other Thursday race winners included Ross Bales with the XR Working Man Series at Cherokee. He picked up $10,000, topping Trent Ivey and Jeff Smith. That series is back June 21st at Belleville, Kansas. And at Deer Creek, Rodney Sanders won his first USMTS feature of the season, advancing from a B main and then going 16th to the win. He's now only three points behind Jake O'Neill for the series points lead. They got two more nights at Deer Creek coming up. Over the next uh, three days, there's plenty of other dirt racing to check out. The World of Outlaws sprint cars are at Atomic Speedway in Ohio for two nights. Sheldon Hoddenshield was a winner there in 2022, and we'll see if Donnie Schatz can keep up his recent run of strong performances. Brad Sweet enters as the series points leader. The ASCS has a trio of shows between Lakeside and Lake Ozark. Uh, Seth Bergman is the points leader. Blake Hahn's going to be racing, as is Brian Brown. Should be some good, uh, good fields there the next couple of days. The Super Dirt Car Series is at Weed Sport and Lebanon Valley. Uh, we'll see if Matt Williamson can keep up his torrid pace in the big block. There's also a ton of other late model racing, including the Spring Nationals, Mars, Ironman, a lot more. There's a ton of stuff going on this Memorial Day weekend, so no lack of options. Uh, that's it for the show today and for the week. Thanks to everyone who continues to watch and comment, even the trolls. Hope you guys enjoy the dirt racing weekend out there. We'll see you right back here on Monday.